All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today we're talking about the mountain pine beetle. What is the mountain pine beetle? It's a tiny little insect about the size of a grain of rice, if you were to put them side by side into the palm of your hand, that is currently responsible for the destruction and deforestation of millions of trees along the Rocky Mountains from down in Mexico up to the United States and all the way up into Canada. And they're doing so because they're currently experiencing what is known as an outbreak. An outbreak is a situation where, due to environmental changes, a stable population of an insect or another animal suddenly has a surge in numbers and they start to do irreparable harm to their environment by eating everything in sight or doing large destruction to the ecosystem at large. This can be things like the destruction of plants, the erosion of landscapes that cause additional changes in the climate in the region. In the case of the pine beetles, this means that they're killing large swaths of trees and leaving entire mountainsides barren so that all the trees are dead, increasing the risk of wildfires. So when beetles go into an area and they start to infect the trees, you'll notice what look like little seeping holes in the sides of the tree. The way that beetles get into the tree is they go up and they're little, you know, they're, remember they're the size of little grains of rice, and they start to burrow into the bark in order to get at the sap layer where they want to get at to eat for food and to also lay their eggs. And as they burrow, Normally, a healthy tree would attempt to expel the insect by emitting a type of toxic resin, which is very sticky and attempts to either suffocate the insect, expel the insect and block up the hole, or otherwise just prevent them from getting inside because it makes it rather difficult and dangerous for the insect. But in our current conditions, where we have both a drought along the mountain range and we have increased temperatures due to climate change, these insects have a much easier time because the trees don't contain as much moisture. And that makes them the ideal spot to call their friends because as they burrow inside, they emit a type of pheromone that calls all of their buddies and they're able to dig in there and get at that sap layer. Once they're in the sap layer, normally the insect wouldn't really be able to metabolize what they're attempting to eat inside of the tree. So they bring along a little buddy and some bacteria that allows them to metabolize and eat both the sugars from the tree and also get the nutrients that they need in order to grow, reproduce, and multiply. And that is the blue stain fungus, which comes along inside of their body that they, as they eat, gets out of their mouth and it begins to infect the tree. Now, the sap layer, as I was saying before, is what allows nutrients to spread throughout the tree. It's the equivalent of blocking off the arteries in the human body and preventing blood flow. So once this is inhibited or damaged, it begins to slowly suffocate and kill the tree. So what happens is this blue stain fungus infects the tree, getting into that sap layer, and it brings the nutrients to a place where these beetles can then burrow through the underlayers and then eat it to metabolize those sugars to keep living and also get the nutrients that they need in order to lay eggs and leave them throughout the tree. And if you initially think to yourself, well, it's a grain of rice, how much can what damage can one beetle do? It's worth noting that one single tree of about modest size can probably hold thousands of these insects even before they start to hatch their eggs. And once this symbiotic relationship gets going, and they lay their eggs inside of the tree, they start to have their larva hatch and spread out, burrowing through the tree as they grow and they pupate until they eventually leave the desiccated dead tree in search of a new home. And once this process gets started, they can probably kill a tree so that it's dead, even if it doesn't look like it's dead, within a few weeks. Now, naturally, the way that these insects are controlled is through a number of different natural processes. The most common one is that during the wintertime, in certain regions of North America, 
it gets cold enough that it just flat out kills the insects inside of the trees. This is the case of several forests up inside of Canada, where those trees have never experienced any type of pine beetle or what's referred to as the greater population of bark beetles that are now starting to see infections from the mountain pine beetle as the temperature rises and it doesn't stay cold enough for long enough to kill these insects. The other way that they typically die is because of wildfires. These beetles produce a large number of dead trees, which is the perfect fuel for a raging wildfire. Unfortunately, because humans live in these areas now, we obviously can't just let these wildfires rage up and down the mountains, producing fertile soil for new tree growth. We have to try to quell it to prevent the destruction of property and the loss of lives. This means that there's a lot more trees that would probably normally be gone that they can eat, along with a lot more fuel that would make it so that wildfires are even more dangerous. However, we prevent them, meaning we help to encourage the spread of these beetles. And we've also currently undergoing a drought along the mountain range, which means the trees are drier. They don't have as effective a defense mechanism against these insects and their various buddies, both in bacteria and fungi that allow them to process and metabolize the trees as they eat them, which makes for the perfect storm for an outbreak. Now, normally, and they scientists suspect that these outbreaks have been happening for a very long time, Normally, when you have an outbreak, it's because the beetles have the perfect conditions to surge, kill a bunch of trees, and then as the tree population dies down and some wildfires go about, then they return to normal numbers as the environment gets cool in the wintertime and things freeze over, and then their populations drop back down to a manageable size. Unfortunately, because of man-made climate change, we're starting to see a huge surge in these insects, and unfortunately, they're starting to make their way across Canada and will eventually start to infect tree populations in the East Coast in the not too distant future if we can't seem to find a way to quell them in some way, shape or form. So in case you ever move to an area like Colorado or Wyoming or maybe Montana or parts of Canada where this is affecting the local ecosystem, you might become familiar or hear about the beetle kill or beetle scar areas of those different areas. And if you do, this is the whole thing of what's going on and the process by which these insects go to reproduce, kill the trees and, you know, generally deforest the area. So I hope you found this video informative. If you have any questions, you can throw those in the comment section below. I will throw up some sources for Wikipedia where you can read more about the mountain pine beetle. And until next time, I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Bye, everybody.